Today we had a very important event at Bruegel. We were talking about the education to employment gap, and uh, we had the Commissioner of Education and Culture, Commissioner Vasilio. The EU can, and does of course, act as an initiator and driver of change through dialogue, evidence-based policy, funding and country-specific policy recommendations. To fulfill this role, we need good, reliable data and information. We then had a presentation of the McKinsey Report on youth unemployment and the education to employment uh, system and some of the changes that need to be made there. Now clearly at the point of the recession, things became more acute, particularly for the youth population. And, and you see the spike here. Now why is that? Uh, first, because more people entered into the labor market at that point, particularly women ages 25 to 40. And people stayed longer in, 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 in the labor market, particularly the population post-50. So in that mix, young people were squeezed out because employers are looking for experience. And by definition, young people are largely in scarce supply of that. When we then turned and understood from employers, where do they face significant challenge? So we, we, we asked them the question of, are you facing serious business consequences defined by cost, time, quality as a function of not having the skills that you need? And we found that those countries where employers are feeling the pain the most due to lack of skills are actually those countries that have the highest youth unemployment rates in Europe. The reality is that we found that the, the similarities are much more dominant than are the differences. So for example, if you look at employer consortiums, um, we found employers coming together in countries as diverse from as, as the US to Korea to Morocco. And the reality is that they come together because they have a real business reason to find a solution for their talent issue. So in sectors of high scarcity or sectors of high churn, we found employers coming together who were competitors in order for them to work collaboratively with education institutions. We found them working down supply chains in Morocco and in Korea. We found them focused on supporting small and medium enterprises So in, in, in places like Australia. So the reality is that what at the heart of it is that businesses realize that if they need to solve the talent problem because of a core business reason in terms of time, cost, speed, they will do so. But that reason has to be clear to them. We then had a panel with uh, the incoming uh, Director General from uh, uh, DG Culture and Education. We also had one of the directors from uh, DG Employment. We underplay differences. I mean, when you have a country like Germany at 6% unemployment and a country like Spain at 55% youth unemployment, it's not a, a difference in degree. Mm -hmm. It's a difference in system. So the thing we have to face for the future, and we don't do it enough in the Commission, is that we have to really be conscious that anything we say that is good for 20 countries is bound to be a banality. Mm -hmm. And that is actually why the report has so many inevitable difficulties in finding good policy recommendations that are not just general objectives, aspirational statements, but are actually operational mm -hmm. policy objectives, if you go beyond the micro of a good initiative. Between having education at the service of company interests and ignoring completely the world of work, there's really, really a compromise in between to be found. And what we need to do at European level is to make sure that education, human capital skills come really to the center of the core business of the EU, which is productivity and sustainable growth. This is, I think, the challenge for the future. The programs should not be another action plan, as I said, with 50 new actions, but rather the approach of member states to change the structure. So a structural reform, a structural change. And this is really hard to do. Because this, and, and this you may have discovered with all those initiatives which do not scale. And this is really the point in, in, uh, that, we, that we need to address. Because when you ad address structural change, you will challenge embedded processes. Um, the, the, the educational institutions have always worked like this and they always have linked to labor market like that. If you want to change that, you need to change processes. But if you change processes, sooner or later you will ta tackle privileges, privileges of people. And they will defend their privileges. This is human being. 
So who is going to take the action to challenge privileges in the process? And this is what we are, at this crossroads we are today. The challenge will be to involve many actors and it also is the challenge to coordinate those various uh, initiatives and also to agree on common targets and then at the end of the day be willing to shift resources in order to achieve results. And we also had someone from uh, Junior Achievement Young Enterprise. It is amazing to think of this generation from us to uh, everything digital, social media, online media, but without entrepreneurship training, without STEM orientation and without mobility, that digital potential stays personal. We need to show to young people what are the real benefits of them getting the skills and also for them to see what is the real economic impact afterwards for their uh, um, activities and what they've done. And we have some studies, in, especially in North America, uh, where we really assess the impact of entrepreneurship education. Uh, we looked at uh, the students in our programs, uh, we tracked them over the years, and we saw that for every dollar invested in a program, the economy will get $45 back at the end. Which means it's a proof both for the economy, but also for the young people, that if they get the right skills, they can really make a huge benefit to the community. Essentially, um, it's the whole system that needs to work. It's the role that uh, universities and vocational educational institutions play. It's also the role that youth play themselves and being proactive and trying to find a job and trying to develop the right skills that they need for the future and also the role that employers play. And as we heard today in the discussion, there are a lot of things that employers can do and there are a lot of things that companies are doing in collaboration with other companies, even in the same industry, even competitors, to try to help um, reach out to youth, provide training, and provide some way of onboarding them. Really good discussion, and I think a lot of really good new ideas that came out. And we also were able to hear more about what the Commission is planning in this area. They've been very, very active. The Commissioner, very committed to seeing through a number of these initiatives that they've already launched, and also a strong commitment between DG Employment and DG Education and Culture to really collaborate together to try to address this very, very important issue and pressing issue in Europe.